plus it again. This is called true balance, and it's a difficult puzzle to do. The idea is to get them all to form a line. I'm starting to get it there, but I've got to do a bit of cheating and hold it. Um, in the middle of each one is a very small magnet there, which helps to stabilize it a bit, but only holds it very weakly. It very quickly releases it. It's not holding it at all strong, but it, you do need that to help you. Otherwise, it'd be almost impossibly difficult. But you're supposed to do it with just one hand and slowly build up the snake so it's up about there. If I can keep going, one more. I think the last two are going to be tr tricky. I'm going to cheat slightly by holding it there. You're not supposed to do that. And the last bit, can I do that without cheating? Just about, yes. Well, with one cheat. And the people who are producing it also said it's also, and they say in the instructions, it's more difficult to do it this way up. Quite a bit more difficult, because they separate just a tiny little bit. A tiny little bit of extra distance means the magnets are holding it even more weakly. And it makes it very, very hard to get the pieces to align themselves. And they also had another version where they had one on top and one underneath, and that looked absolutely impossible. So this is tricky enough, but that's a bit of fun. Something I found at the New York Toy Fair. There's a company down in Texas who'd invented it. And to my mind, it's a very nice little mechanical toy, something that I love to play with, and it's a skill toy for children. But True Balance, I think, is a, a very fine toy and a nice discovery for the New York Toy Fair, which is what I've just been to. So what else did I find there? There was a Japanese shop there where I found the most extraordinary flick books I've ever seen. I've got some wonderful flick books from this, this particular sequence, but this is a bizarre one because it's got three flick books, one beside each other, and the chum and joints. So let's have a look at them. These are all a little bit surreal. Some of the stuff that Japanese come up with is beautifully depicted, but I can't understand it. I don't know what they're actually, what, what's the message? <laughs> what are the figures? Perhaps if you are in the Japanese culture, you know what's going on here, but I find quite fun to watch but just leave me a battle because I'm always looking for meaning and you can't expect meaning when you're so far away from the from the Japanese mind I suppose it's extraordinary the stuff they come up with but what an idea too to have a flip book with three flip books attached and they gave me a second one as well so there's two in the series I love it nice addition it's a wonderful thing here called a super egg which I wanted for a long long time Piet Hein the Danish mathematician popularized them about uh, ooh, 30 or 40 years ago, but it was actually invented, I think, as a mathematics at least, by a, Ger a German mathematician. Uh, and the idea is, although it's completely curved, or there's no, no straight bit anywhere, and there's certainly no, no flat bit at the bottom, it stays like that because it's got a center of gravity going right through that point, which means if you displace it very slightly, it'll happily wobble back to its stable point. If you go too far, it'll fall over like that. But if you do a, a gentle little rock, it'll stay like that and then gradually come to a vault and just rest in one place. The other thing you can do with it, which is fascinating, is a very gentle movement like that. And you get an appearance of something going blob, 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 blob. I think the Victorians discovered this when they made eggs out of gold or something precious or reflective. As it slows down, it almost you, you can almost forget that it's actually rotating. It just seems to be a mass going blob, 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 blob. Beautiful. And there's lots and lots of interesting mathematics involved with the, um, the super egg, they call it. And I'm very, very pleased to get one of these for my collection. And then there's a spinny top, which has had quite a bit of publicity in America. It's a very high tech thing called a limbo. And they come up with a little spinning place as well. And it's a beautiful shape. Look at that. Oh, a spinning top. That's stunning. Also, it's powered by electrical source. You actually put a USB socket into the mains and then feed this into here and then charge it up. Inside the top, well, let me just set it spinning first. At its best, when they've set the record, the, uh, the stopwatch going, they've found it's gone on for 90 hours, which is a, 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 it's a world record. It goes on and on and on. There's a tiny motor. But to look inside is fascinating. You do a gentle like that. And inside, you've got some very high-tech stuff. Look at this. There's a motor in there. There's a tiny sensor. There's a tiny little uh, power capacitor. Quite a bit of weight going around there to make some inertia. And this wonderful performance of what I think must be the longest spinning top, running spinning top available. I think for the 90 hours, they found it did stop after a while, but when they examined it, they found it was the battery that failed, not the top itself. So they cheerfully put new batteries in it and set it spinning again. Extraordinary. But a wonderful piece of engineering and of work, the Limbo spinning top. That's a tremendous new addition to my spinning top collection. Look forward to charging you up. Well done.
I like the tea also of providing it with a little arena in order to show it in. And the last one reflects the, um, the one I've just been showing, but it's uh, got some lovely artwork to it. It's the two balance again, but in the form of a snake. Look, with the back of the snake's head as well. This I find is much trickier than the other one. I think it's because the magnets perhaps are weaker. I don't know what it is. So with this one, I'm going to have a go again. I'm going to cheat a little bit by putting it around there. And eventually, 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 if you're, oh no, it's going, oh no, it's all, oh, I've got to do a bigger cheating here. It's a very, very tricky thing to do. And as for trying to do it upside down, well, that's going to be beyond me. But I'll just persist with this one way, I think it is, and see if I can get the thing to perform over the next um, two hours. <laughs> no, I won't do it for that long. But it's a, it's a lovely, lovely toy for people to practice their dexterity and their skills. I just think that the, the, perhaps the magnets are a bit weaker. Or I think also the order in which you do them probably is, is, is something to do with. Perhaps it shouldn't be done from the bottom upwards. So it's four very nice toys from the New York Toy Fair. I'm so pleased to have all of these. I'm looking forward to showing them to people.